Now on 4 News Now, political graffiti on the Post Street Bridge in downtown Spokane. We talked with a candidate who says his write-in campaign has people taking a new approach to getting the word out and why the graffiti isn't legal. Illegal, rather. Tomorrow we have another warm day, but big changes will follow. I'm tracking rain and cooler temperatures in your first alert forecast. And a warning this afternoon for people living in Liberty Lake over burglaries and car problems. We'll show you what one couple says they're doing to help keep their homes safe. You're watching 4 News Now Special Edition. Well, from downtown Spokane to the South Hill, political graffiti on planters and concrete walls. City crews moved quickly to clean it all up this morning. Thanks so much for joining us on this special edition of 4 News. Now, I'm Derek Dice. And I'm Kirsten O'Connor. That graffiti promoted a website paid for by Jim Wilson, the Republican candidate running for state Senate in the 3rd District. Wilson is also running against Marcus Riccelli, a current member of the Washington House of Representatives representing District 3. Marissa Rio joins us live from the Post Street Bridge. So, Marissa, you spoke with both candidates today. That's right, I did, and both candidates have very different views on the graffiti that happened here to these planters behind me. Now look, their background is also very different. Marcus Riccelli is a career politician, while Wilson is a write-in candidate whose career is in real estate. Now look, Marcus Riccelli was originally running unopposed, and this fired up Wilson enough to run as a write-in candidate during the Washington state primaries. He did receive enough write-in votes during the primaries that his name did make the November ballot. Wilson hopes that the graffiti garnered the attention of local voters. It's typical to see political signs along our streets, especially during an election year. But it isn't every day that you see candidates using graffiti to promote their campaign. But the purpose was to highlight the issues that are not being brought up in the campaign, especially by the people who have been in office. Graffiti like this here was found all along the planters on the newly renovated Post Street Bridge and on 29th Street near the Manitou Shopping Center. While Wilson says he didn't go out and do the graffiti himself, he knew that members of his campaign were. We don't have thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to spend to get the word out. So anyway, the youth came up with this idea to, to spread the word. Washington Public Disclosure Commission reveals that Wilson has raised over $35,000 and has only spent a fraction of that amount. Richelli has raised over $212,000. The graffiti promotes this website here, Stop the Violence Spokane, which encourages people to vote against Marcus Richelli, Natasha Hill, and Bob Ferguson. This way of capturing the attention of voters is something Wilson's opponent, Marcus Riccelli, doesn't condone. We've heard loudly and clearly from business owners and people downtown, they want to end graffiti vandalism. So I just think it shows two different vision, uh, visions for Spokane. I have a positive shared view, uh, vision for moving Spokane forward, and my opponent seems to be wanting to uh, encourage irresponsible political stunts. The city said... My IFB went out. Cute, cute, cute. I asked, um, I. I asked Wilson, since his campaign relies on public safety and ending violence, if the graffiti was counteractive, and he said to an extent, but if this brought attention to the issues our state faces, then he thinks his campaign did a good job. Marcus Riccelli, on the other hand, says that this was an irresponsible approach to make our city crews come out here early this morning and clean up the graffiti. He said it was a waste of taxpayers' resources. Live in Spokane, Marissa Rio, 4 News Now. All right, Marissa, thank you. Well, a brush fire forced a lane closure on westbound I-90 today. Here's a video from WashDOT that they posted on X, formerly known as Twitter, this afternoon. The fire was burning near Highway 2. The Department of Transportation says the right lane of I-90 at the interchange was closed for a while there. Drivers are told to expect delays and slow down anytime an emergency crew is out there putting out a fire. Well, your lunchtime commute may have been a little bit longer this afternoon due to an oil spill. The Department of Transportation shut down two eastbound lanes of I-90 at Argon just after 10 o'clock this morning. Look at this traffic camera footage. You can see how backed up traffic had become in Spokane Valley just before lunchtime. The closure ensured that no vehicles spun out on the oil slick and that it was properly cleaned up. No word yet on what caused that oil to spill. Well, our streak of beautiful fall weather continues. It's shaping up to be another great evening. A little cooler tomorrow. Allison Martinez is here in for Chris Crocker tonight with your first alert forecast.
Yeah, those gorgeous conditions are continuing. We're taking a live look over the Veterans Memorial Arena in Spokane right now, and it's currently 73 degrees. You can see those clear skies currently. Four things to know about your weather for the upcoming week. We have a warm and sunny day again tomorrow. We'll have temperatures that are a bit cooler, but still in the 70s. We do have the chance to see a comet tonight. This is a once in a lifetime type of comet. We'll have more on this coming up here in a bit. We also have a cool down that we're expecting midweek and along with cooler temperatures, we also have the potential for rain showers and those will really begin on Wednesday. Here we're taking a look at our current conditions. 73 as we mentioned in Spokane. Coeur d'Alene, you're at 74 degrees right now. 79 degrees in St. Mary's, 71 in Pullman, 75 degrees in Ritzville, and 72 degrees in Moses Lake. For our overnight lows, it's going to be a mostly comfortable uh, evening. We have temperatures in the 40s as you start your day tomorrow. So 47 degrees in Spokane, 48 in Coeur d'Alene, 49 in Kellogg, and 43 degrees in Pullman. Here's our 12-hour forecast. If you have plans for the rest of the afternoon and into the evening, you've got some great weather on your hands. We'll be at 74 degrees by 5 p.m., 60 degrees at 8 p.m., and then we'll cool down to the 50s by around midnight. We'll have plenty of sunshine, and then as we mentioned, a really nice clear night with light winds. For tomorrow, we have another sunny day. Temperatures right around 70 degrees, and definitely soak it up. It's a great opportunity to get outside, do any outdoor work or anything that you need to do outside before the rain and the cooler temperatures come in. 48 degrees is how we're starting off the day, so definitely send a little bit more of a layer for the kids going to the bus stop tomorrow morning, 60 degrees at 11, and we'll reach our high of 70 degrees by 3 p.m. Allison, thank you. That dog park that was supposed to open in Highbridge Park has been slightly delayed. We've been told it will only be a minor delay, and that's because of the coordination of fencing, paving, and concrete work. A soft opening is still scheduled for later in the month of October. We'll continue to follow this story for you and update you on our website, kxly.com. A big day for shoppers in Airway Heights as the new Yolks Fresh Market is now open. The new store is on Lyons Road on the north side of Highway 2, just behind the Kalispell Chevron gas station. The new Yolks replaces the old store that's been on the south side of Highway 2, just a few blocks away for years. All of the employees from the old store transferred over and more people had to be hired to fill all of the jobs at the new, much larger store. Yolks, of course, is a local grocery chain that's been in the area since the 1940s. Around the Northwest, the Boeing machinist strike in Seattle is entering its second month. You're looking at strikers in Seattle holding signs in protest. Economic experts say the shift from production to protest is costing Boeing millions. Last week, the company shared it burned through $1.3 billion, in fact, during this third quarter. Boeing's latest statement reiterated the company wants to reach an agreement, but believes the union is insisting on unreasonable demands. The president of International Association of Machinists in the Seattle region says union leadership is fighting for what its members want. It's time to come to the table, stay at the table, do the hard work, and bargain the things so we can reach an agreement. Not a single plane has been worked on at the production facility in Everett since the 33,000 workers walked off the job a month ago. Boeing announced Friday it would be laying off 10% of its workforce over the next several months. Well, if you've ever flown into Seattle SeaTac Airport, you know it can be very crowded. Well, now the airport in Yakima is working on a plan that might help that situation. The idea is to use Yakima as a hub for regional flights. Instead of having to uh, go to SeaTac, you can go to your community airport, get on electric or hybrid electric airplane and come here. So what we are doing is we are trying to outfit this airport with electric aircraft charging capability. Well, research suggests SeaTac will reach passenger capacity by 2032. Yakima Airport Director Robert Hodgman says there are no big plans right now to move flights to Yakima, just small steps that might lead to that plan. Hmm. Well, holiday candles are supposed to bring comfort and good cheer. But that's not the case with one candle from Bath & Body Works. We'll show you the controversy coming up. Plus, we've been enjoying the Northern Lights a whole lot this year. We'll show you the new attraction in the sky that you should be able to see in just a couple of hours from now.
Up next, the police warning for people living in Liberty Lake and what one couple is doing to keep their homes safe in the midst of burglaries and car prowlers. You're watching 4 News Now Special Edition. Connect with 4 News Now on KXLY+. 4 News Now is brought to you by Disney on Ice. Across our state, we have roads and bridges in desperate need of repair. But Initiative 2117 would make things even worse. Slashing funding for infrastructure, putting all of us at risk. 2117 is a bad deal for Washington. My late father-in-law lit up a room, but his vision dimmed with age. He had AMD. I didn't know it then, but it can progress to GA, an advanced form of the disease. His struggle with vision loss from AMD made me want to help you see warning signs of GA, like hazy or blurred vision, so it's hard to see fine details. Colors that appear dull or washed out. Or trouble with low light. That makes driving at night a real challenge. If you think you have GA, don't wait. Treatments are available. Ask a retina specialist about FDA-approved treatments for GA and go to gawontwait.com. Too many politicians are too busy fighting each other, but I just want to get things done to make people's lives better. I'm Maria Cantwell. I led a bipartisan initiative to bring computer chip manufacturing and other supply chains back to America, generating billions in private sector investment to make the chips that run our cars, our appliances, and even our farm equipment, creating jobs, boosting our competitiveness, and lowering costs. It's beginning to work. That's why I approve this message. The Walker's four-day clearance sale is going on now, where you can enjoy store-wide discounts while they last, with clearance deals up to 70% off. Or you can pay over time with 0% interest until 2029, with no down payment and no minimum purchase. Get that new furniture you've been wanting, and save big at the four-day clearance sale. Going on now at Walker's. It's a four-day four-wheel drive sale this week at Cal. Where for four days only, Cal is dropping the prices on four-wheel drives. Plus, giving you an extra $400 for your trade-in. Which is a double $800 reason to upgrade your ride from Cal. For us, protecting the land means everything. It's our homestead and legacy. But Initiative 2117 puts our air and water at risk. And cuts to transportation funding will make it harder to move products. 2117 is a bad deal for Washington. Welcome back. The city of Liberty Lake is urging neighbors to take extra precautions to protect their properties. This comes as the Liberty Lake Police Department is actively investigating a series of recent thefts. Our Hunter Bertram shows what you can do now to protect your valuables. Recent thefts have fueled neighborhood discussion in Liberty Lake. You think, oh, it's easy and, it, you know, we don't have to be careful, but now we're being more careful. When we got that notice this morning from the HOA, from the police department, it kind of just woke us up again. That notice sent by Liberty Lake Police to the entire city, telling neighbors that prowlers are trying to take their stuff. And the biggest thing for me was when our neighbors right across the street in the daylight, in the daytime, had packages stolen. Now Liberty Lake Police says petty crime is not rising in the city, but with recent conversations, they did want the community to be reminded to take action now. Firstly, saying criminals don't look at age and decide who they'll steal from. That tricycle you left outside could be a score waiting to happen. And the Liberty Lake Police Department is telling everyone when they leave their cars, make sure you roll up all your windows. You also lock and triple lock your doors and don't leave behind anything that would identify you or where you live and especially don't leave behind those garage openers. They even suggest taking those with you on a keychain every time you get in and out of your vehicle. And finally, a precaution Lynn and John started doing recently. We turn on our porch light on board. And we've never done that before, but we've we've started lately. In Liberty Lake, Hunter Bertram for News Now. 
Well, a small business says it's filing several police reports a week over homeless people trespassing and leaving behind trash and drug paraphernalia. Absolute drug testing on Mission and Ash says the problem has been getting worse over the last four years and has been filing police reports every other day recently. The business has reached out to the city of Spokane and the police department, but it says neither were helpful. Just today, in cleaning up today, we have come across this is um, what they call, or what we call, it's 0.5 ounces. And this right here is, I'm sure, meth or heroin or mix, mixed with um, fentanyl. Missy Brum says she also reached out to the Spokane City Council, but was told private businesses are responsible for cleaning up their own property. Coming up tonight on a special edition of 4 News Now, find out how much absolute drug testing spent on security equipment to make things safer for its staff and customers. We have another sunny day on our hands tomorrow, but then things take a turn. We're breaking down the timing for our rain chances coming up. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Are you struggling to get through the day? Are you experiencing chronic pain, burning, numbness, and tingling in your hands or feet? Pay attention because you are probably experiencing peripheral neuropathy. The most common symptoms are numbness, burning, muscle cramps, and problems with balance. Neuropathy is treatable, and our office can help. It's time to get real results. Pick up your phone and call us right now. If you're one of the first 25 callers, you'll receive a free nerve damage screening. This nerve damage screening will tell you if you're at risk for serious nerve damage and if you're qualified for our cutting-edge treatment program to stop the nerve damage. Don't wait until it's too late and your symptoms get so bad that you lose your freedom and are restricted to a wheelchair, walker, or need amputation. Call now to be one of the first 25 callers to receive a free nerve damage screening. Hurry, call now to find out if you qualify for our free nerve damage screening and see how we can change your life. It's time to feel better. Call today. We've been testing products and advocating for consumers for over 80 years. Each year, we test thousands of products for safety, reliability, and performance. A product with high scores becomes CR Recommended. You'll see CR Recommended while shopping online and in stores. We buy all of the products we rate. No one can pay us to rate a product. Purchase a membership to Consumer Reports and get exclusive access to detailed ratings and reviews on CR.org and our mobile ratings app. now is brought to you by Custom Truck. We are taking a live look over downtown Spokane. It may look a little bit fall-like with some color in those trees, but it sure didn't feel like it today. We had temperatures that were 10 to 15 degrees warmer than normal. Tomorrow we have another warm day on our hands, but before we get there, we're cooling down to an overnight low of 47 degrees. Tonight we'll have a mostly clear evening with light winds. For tomorrow, we have a high of 70 degrees, so a bit cooler than what we had today. Mostly sunny skies and light winds. Now here are our highs around the region. You can see 74 is your high in Kellogg tomorrow, 76 in St. Mary's, 73 in Pullman, Ritzville you'll be at 72 tomorrow, 74 in Grand Coulee, and 71 degrees in Moses Lake. So here's our high temperature trend. You can see this white line across your screen. That's our normal high, which is around 59, 60 degrees. And for tomorrow, we are still well above that, you can see. And then we have a bit of a roller coaster that's 
going to follow. Wednesday will be our best chance for normal average fall like conditions. But then starting on Thursday, t things take a little bit of a turn. You can see we're dipping down to temperatures in the mid to low 50s. We'll be in the upper 50s by around Saturday, 56 degrees. So some changing conditions for you here. And along with those cooler temperatures, we also have the potential for some much needed rain. This is going to be especially present on Wednesday. We're looking at an 80% chance for measurable rain. Right now we're seeing about a tenth of an inch that could be possible of wetting rains. And then a 60% chance for Thursday. And our rain chances will subside for the days that follow, though we still have that potential there. So let's take a look at how this is really going to play out. Tomorrow will be mostly dry. As you can see, we just have some increased cloud coverage during the day tomorrow. But then at night around 4 p.m., central Washington will really be the main area getting any sort of moisture there. But then things take a turn around 10 p.m. You can see this thick band of moisture making its way across our region. And along with that rain, we also have the potential for some breezy winds that even could bring some blowing dust. Nothing like what we saw uh, just a few uh, days or weeks ago, um, but we do have that potential there. And then you could see in the overnight hours that rain will kind of blanket our region. 8 a.m. as you're taking your kids out the door for school on Wednesday morning, you shouldn't really be feeling raindrops here. A lot of that rain will subside. But then in the afternoon, we've got scattered showers all throughout the inland northwest that will follow. Here's your planning forecast. Here you can see really just the variation that we have over the next couple of days. So 70 degrees tomorrow. Tomorrow's a great day to get outside, take advantage of those last moments of sunshine and sunnier temperature or sunnier conditions because as we look to the future, we'll be seeing a lot more temperatures like this. So 60 degrees for Wednesday. That's where we have big potential for rain, dipping down to 54 degrees for Thursday, 53 for Friday and 56 for Saturday. Temperatures in the upper 50s for the days that follow. I want you to take a look here. As you can see, Friday morning, 32 degrees. That's going to feel like a rude awakening, especially with the temperatures that we've seen over the last couple of days. That's right. We better enjoy these warmer temperatures while we have them, Allison. Thank you. Well, Bath & Body Works has stopped selling one of its candles after its design sparked controversy online. The label on the holiday scented candle was decorated with a stylized paper snowflake shown here on your screen. Many people on social media compared it to the hoods and robes worn by Ku Klux Klan members. Bath & Body Works has apologized and pulled the candle from its website and retail locations. Well, Diversion Events is hosting a spooky soiree this Friday at the Perth event center dress up in your best costumes and enjoy an alcohol free evening filled with music dancing and entertainment tickets are just 15 bucks links and details can be found on our website at kxy.com coming up on this special edition of four news now remnants of the gray fire which destroyed thousands of acres last summer are still burning underground at a hospital landfill how these flames survived all this time. And thousands still without power in Florida will have more on the recovery five days after Milton made landfall. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. This year, don't wait another year in pain and suffering, struggling to pay your bills due to an injury or disability. Hello, I'm Eric Pinar, and collecting Social Security Disability is a complex process, and our firm has helped thousands of people collect the benefits they are due. It's not easy, but we understand how to get it done. And at Pinar Law, we don't get paid until you do. So give us a call for your free consultation today. This is a story of first downs and second chances. I wanted to keep playing, but my feet hurt. You'd think all those big league experts could have helped. You have access to anything, but none of it worked. His football career ended, but his plantar fasciitis pain didn't. Till he found the Good Feet store. I got fitted for my art supports. Let me tell you something. They work. Now, he recommends Good Feet to... Anybody. If you move, go to the Good Feet store. So get moving. Come in for your free fitting. I'm Chad Young from TheEasyHomeBuyer.com, Spokane and Coeur d'Alene's easiest way to sell your house fast. If you have a few moments, I hope you'll give me the opportunity to make you an instant cash offer on your home. 
With EasyHomeBuyer.com, we will buy your house in as-is condition with no repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. To get your no-obligation cash offer, give us a call or visit us online at TheEasyHomeBuyer.com. Pick up the phone to inquire. Call the Easy Home Buyer. It's time for Spin Ghoulies Halloween Bonanza. A full month of ghoulish goodies, including the return of Spin Ghoulie double features and the premiere of the all-new House of Spin Ghoulie. All October long on MeTV 4.2. Shop consigned furniture and jewelry first for new, consigned, and even one-of-a-kind pieces. New shipments coming in every day. Save up to 70% off retail. If you don't see the price you like, make us an offer. Consigned furniture. Easy way to sell, smart way to buy. Whether you're in the market for affordable furniture, clothing, or vintage treasures, you'll find what you need at UGM thrift stores. But checking off your list is not all you'll accomplish. Every purchase and donation opens the doors for men, women, and children experiencing homelessness to get the help they need. Your support provides food and shelter, job training, and holistic recovery services at Union Gospel Mission. Stop in today and offer life change. Four News Now is brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. All right, welcome back. Prepare yourself to pay a little more at the pump this week. Ooh, the average price of a gallon of gas in Spokane rose 18 cents this week. According to Gas Surveyor Gas Buddy, Spokane's new average is $3.77. This increase is three cents higher than last month, but still almost 90 cents lower than this time last year. In Idaho, gas fell three cents this week to an average of $3.43. Across the nation, hundreds of thousands of people are still without power following hurricane. Milton. People waited in long lines this weekend for free fuel. Many people said they needed it for their generators. Over the next few days, more than 100 million gallons of fuel will come into Tampa's ports. And it's been almost a week since Milton hit, and there are still so many without power. Entire neighborhoods remain flooded. Over the weekend, President Biden promised millions of dollars in federal funding to communities affected by the storm. ABC's Rena Roy brings us an update on the recovery efforts. Five days after Milton making landfall, some neighborhoods still underwater, like this one in Pasco County, Florida. Streets turn to rivers, people using boats to get around, paddling through the roadways. In Hernando County, water levels still rising. Authorities issuing voluntary evacuations along this river where many homes are already inundated. I just looked at the flood gauge and it looks like we're at about 18 feet and it's predicted to go to 19 feet. So they certainly need to take action now and if they're concerned about their safety, they need to evacuate. Hundreds of thousands still without power. Florida Power and Light is saying that uh, by the end of the day Wednesday, they anticipate uh, just about everybody will be uh, restored to power. Communities trying to move forward and rebuild together. Community is the best part, though. Everybody helping each other. Gordon Akerson, who lives in Lakeland, Florida, says part of his home was swallowed into the ground by a sinkhole. So I saw all the drywall on top of my car, and I said, oh, my God, the roof collapsed. I thought it was a leak. And then I ran in the garage, but I got to the doorway and saw that the whole garage wasn't there. Gas still running low in some areas, but deliveries have been arriving to help keep up with demand. President Biden vowing to help with $94 million in federal funding after surveying the widespread destruction over the weekend. It's in moments like this we come together to take care of each other, not as Democrats or Republicans, but as Americans. Americans who need help. Milton hit less than two weeks after Hurricane Helene. Up to 100,000 homes and businesses in North Carolina are still without running water, and it could take weeks to fully restore service. Now, as a result of these back-to-back -back storms, analysts predict home insurance rates could potentially rise across the country. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, several analysts are putting the number of insured losses in the tens of billions of dollars, but the uninsured losses could reach $30 billion, according to one assessment by CoreLogic. Mark Friedlander of the Insurance Information Institute says Helene's catastrophic aftermath serves as a reminder for everyone to review their homeowner's policy. No matter where you live in the country, you need to own your risk, meaning you need to understand the potential hazards you might face in your community. Uh, this could be regions with higher wildfire risk or frequent tornado activity. Friedlander also pointed out that standard property insurance does not cover flooding. 
Well, next on 4 News Now, it's almost three weeks until Election Day. It'll be a busy week ahead on the campaign trail for both candidates. Coming up, the latest from the campaign trail and what we now know about the man arrested near Trump's California rally. And what local fire officials are saying about the fire that's been burning underground in Medical Lake for over a year. That's next. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Are you ready to stay for less and play for more? The Kootenai Casino has low room rates in our most exciting gaming yet. Book now to get your deluxe room at the Kootenai Falls Lodge for just $99 every midweek night in October. And join us for October Hot Spins, Weekend Super Spins, and catch the game Monday nights. Win big in October. Book your getaway at the Kootenai Casino today. Call 888-YOU-ARE-LUCKY or visit KootenyRiverInn.com. Too many politicians are too busy fighting each other. But I just want to get things done to make people's lives better. I'm Maria Cantwell. I led a bipartisan initiative to bring computer chip manufacturing and other supply chains back to America, generating billions in private sector investment to make the chips that run our cars, our appliances, and even our farm equipment, creating jobs, boosting our competitiveness, and lowering costs. It's beginning to work. That's why I approve this message. You're building a home or updating an existing one. You want windows and patio doors to be strong, beautiful, long-lasting, and durable. You want to express creativity and increase your home's curb appeal. To feel secure in your investment, choose Milgard Windows and Patio Doors from River City Glass, industry leaders with the highest quality materials and windows that are backed by a lifetime warranty. Residential and commercial, Milgard Windows and Patio Doors. Call River City Glass or visit their showroom at 6615 East Main. This is important information from AARP and BECU. With the general election only weeks away, there's a lot at stake. Data shows that voters age 50 and over make up the majority of voters in most elections. Make sure that your voice is heard. When AARP asks, older adults say they want candidates who will address their day-to-day -day challenges, financial security, and the needs of family caregivers. Make an informed decision on the issues you care about. For tips and tools, check out AARP's online election guide at this website. We're Ken and Donnie. We're not brother and sister. We're not husband and wife. She's not my daughter. He's not just arm candy. Hey. We're not bulldogs. And we're not hammers. What we are, we're advocates. And so if you've been injured, we fight for you. The insurance companies know us. And they know we're ready to go to court. Our record shows we do what it takes to win. If you've been seriously injured in a crash. You deserve more than just a law firm. You deserve an advocate. Heart candy. Welcome back. The Gray Fire in Medical Lake that started in August of 2023 is actually still burning. This may come as a surprise to some because the fire is underground. The fire is near Eastern State Hospital, burning in a landfill that was buried long ago. Spokane County Fire District 3 and the Department of Ecology have been working to put the fire out for more than a year now. Madeline Mullins explains why this fire is still burning. From above, the site of the fire looks like a patch of land with orange fencing around it. But below are piles of concrete, tiles, lumber, and other construction debris that has been burning. Spokane County Fire District 3 has been trying to put the fire out several times since it started burning in August of 2023. The fire department was going out regularly trying to put water on it to make the flames go out. Um, and that kind of continued throughout the winter of 2023. Unfortunately, they were not successful. And that was when the Department of Ecology was called in. Our priority is to, to identify those elevated temperature areas and um, put that out. Kristen Beck is the site manager at the Department of Ecology. She says the fire is so hard to put out because they don't know what exactly is down there. There's a lot of pockets where air can come in and ignite the fire. There can be biological activity and increase in biological activity increases um, your temperatures in the landfill. Um, so there are lots of factors and um, they're just very, very difficult fires to put out. The Department of Ecology says it's working with the Department of Social Health Services who own the property. There is no immediate threat to the people who live in the area, but there could be long-term effects from the fire. The idea being that we first want to put the fire out and then we want to see if there was any contamination. Tonight at 6, I will share how you can give feedback on the Department of Ecology's plan and how soon they say they can work to start putting it out. In Medical Lake, I'm Madeline Mullins, 4 News Now. 
Well, tracking the wildfire that started burning in Chelan County yesterday, evacuations have been downgraded to level one for those living north of Jim Smith Road and west of Connery Road. The fire is burning about 216 acres just east of Squilchuck Road, five miles southeast of Wenatchee. According to the Chelan County Emergency Management's Facebook page, it is 30% contained so far. I'll take a look at these photos of a comet that was last seen 80,000 years ago. They were taken by a viewer over the weekend in Moscow. If you missed it, don't worry. Scientists say it will be visible for the next few weeks. You should look in the western sky at night just after sunset. Try to catch a glimpse. You should be able to see it all on your own, but using binoculars or a small telescope will capture it too. And while we are looking into the sky, here's footage of NASA launching a spacecraft to explore one of Jupiter's moons. The Europa Clipper will serve as NASA's first spacecraft dedicated to studying an ice-covered ocean world in our solar system. It's expected to arrive at its destination in 2030. All right, now for a look at the weather back down here on Earth, we'll send things over to Allison Martinez. And Allison, I know you mentioned that comment earlier in the newscast. Do you think we're going to have clear skies to see it? Yeah, tonight is definitely your best bet if you want to check it out. Like we mentioned earlier, this comet is visible for the next couple of weeks all through October. But tonight is really the prime spot. We've got clear skies and that won't be the case for the next couple of days. This is the Su Shinshan Atlas Comet. This photo was sent to us by our friend Jerry from last night and such a cool thing to witness. If you want to check it out yourself, you're going to want to keep an eye out for it just after sunset around twilight. The sun should set at around 6.02 p.m. tonight in Spokane. So here are the conditions you can expect if you want to check it out. As you can see, we have very limited uh, cloud coverage all throughout the inland northwest tonight. You can see most of this is really focused over in Wenatchee into Grand Coulee. But as we make our way, especially to the state line, we have clear skies for tonight. And as we mentioned, that won't necessarily be the case for the next couple of nights. For our 12-hour forecast, we've got some really nice, comfortable conditions if you are going to be out outside um, 74 degrees for our high around 5 p.m. We'll cool down to 60 by 8 p.m. and then we'll be at 53 degrees at midnight and all throughout the next couple of hours we have light winds in store. Four things to know about your weather as we start off this week. We have a warm and sunny day yet again tomorrow. We have that chance to see the comet tonight. You'll want to look south and make sure you're someplace dark. Get away from the city lights. We have a cool down expected midweek and along with those cooler temperatures, we also have the chance for some rain that will be especially prominent on Wednesday. For tomorrow, we have a high of 70 degrees, sunny skies, a little bit more cloud coverage than what you saw today, and also a little bit cooler. We'll be at 48 degrees around 7, 52 at 9 a.m., and then we'll hike up to 70 degrees by 3 p.m. All right, Allison, thank you. For the first time since they became their party's official nominees, former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris campaigned in the same crucial battleground state. The presidential candidates held events on either end of Pennsylvania today. With almost three weeks until Election Day, the race for the White House is looking to be close. ABC's Perry Russell is in Washington, D.C. with the latest poll numbers. In the final weeks of the race for the White House, new polling from ABC News and Ipsos shows Vice President Kamala Harris at 50 percent, former President Trump at 48 percent. That's within the margin of error. Harris is running mate Governor Tim Walz in Wisconsin today. We're closing on opportunity for all. We're closing on middle class matters. We're closing on investing in education. Harris and Trump on opposite ends of must win Pennsylvania. Harris and Erie focusing on mobilizing black male voters. Donald Trump's not going to win black men. Uh, he's not going to win a majority of them. But if he doesn't lose as badly as he has in the past, if he's able to win a quarter of them, that's a huge difference. And it makes it makes a difference in some of the most important battlegrounds. Trump with a town hall outside Philadelphia before heading to Georgia. Early voting starts there tomorrow. Former President Bill Clinton now on the campaign trail, rallying for Harris in Georgia. All we got to do is show up. If we show up, we'll win. In California, investigators are looking into the background of a man who was arrested near a Trump rally this weekend with multiple guns and ammunition. Authorities say he's part of a far right group. Sources tell ABC News there is no evidence he made any threats against Trump. What we do know is he showed up with multiple passports with different names, an unregistered vehicle with fake license plate, and loaded firearms. 
And new today, Harris has agreed to do a sit down interview with Fox News that will happen on Wednesday. It's her first ever sit down interview with the network. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. Well, if you wished you had a personal assistant to help you with your holiday <laughs> shopping, you may be in luck this season. Walmart and Amazon are rolling out a new AI shopping experience just before Black Friday. And we'll show you some fall produce that is squashing records. We'll be right back. <laughs> Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Excitement is building all over Spokane and Eastern Idaho. People looking for a truly affordable dental implant solution are racing to Renew. Renew offers people suffering with missing teeth, failing teeth, or those who hate their ill-fitting traditional dentures a revolutionary fixed removable dental implant solution that locks securely in place with prices up to 60% less than other providers. Call 208-487-5255. Happy anniversary from McVeigh Brothers. For over 90 years, our family has been remodeling homes in eastern Washington and northern Idaho. We sell the very best products in composition and metal roofing, the energy-efficient Coeur windows, and our unlimited selection of maintenance-free siding options. And during our anniversary sale, you can choose up to $2,500 off on select packages or zero down, zero payments, and zero interest for six months. At McVeigh Brothers, we're always working for you. Hello, I'm Mark Peterson. It's that time of year again when Washington Trust Bank helps you dispose of your sensitive documents and protect your identity with four easy steps. First, drive to one of their six participating drive through locations. Second, fill your seal and shred bag with the documents that you want to destroy. Third, secure the seal and shred bag. Then drop off your bag at Debris where they will destroy your documents in their secure space. Shred Day is Friday, October 18th from 9 to 5. Pick up your seal and shred bag at one of their six participating locations. Don't mind me. I'm just the flu. I'm quite harmless, really. And when people ask, but aren't you linked to dangerous flu complications like pneumonia, heart attack, and hospitalizations? I just say, but I'm just the flu. It's him. Who? I'm just the flu. Demand more from your flu shot. Sanofi higher dose flu vaccines are proven to provide better flu protection than standard dose flu shots in older adults. They've even been shown to better protect against flu-related complications. Don't get flu zone high dose if you've had a severe allergic reaction to its components, including egg products or after previous dose of flu vaccine. Don't get flu block if you've had a severe allergic reaction to its components. Tell your healthcare professional if you've had severe muscle weakness after a flu shot. Fainting has occurred. People with weakened immune systems may have a lower vaccine response. All flu shots are not the same. Ask for a Sanofi higher dose flu vaccine. Talk to your pharmacist or doctor about flu zone high dose or flu block. 4 News Now is brought to you by Carpet One. I officially have the title of largest pumpkin ever grown in Colorado. <laughs> Take a look at this gigantic pumpkin grown by a firefighter in Colorado. The gourd broke records when it weighed in at 2,083 pounds. Okay, and if you can believe it, across the globe, an even bigger pumpkin was grown in Europe. Ooh. This pumpkin, grown by a man in Belgium, tipped the scales at a massive 2,500 pounds. <laughs> Incredible. All right, looks like Spokane has some catching up to do if we want to stay up on the map then. Yeah, I don't think Green Bluff has pumpkins that big, <laughs> but you know the one at the Spokane County Interstate Fair that you can guess? Sure, sure, sure. Kind of gets close to that, probably. I think it's in like the 700 pound range, Allison. That's pretty amazing. I haven't seen that. I haven't. Oh, but now haven't? I think that's a must do on my bucket list yeah, for next, next summer. Summer. I'm taking you. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to guess. I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Well, speaking of fall, we're not quite there. We have temperatures that are more like summer fair temperatures for the last couple of days, but we'll get there very soon with fall like conditions. Looking ahead, you can see we have a system of low pressure moving in. We have a big pattern change on our hands coming up here very quickly. And along with it, we have breeze Easy winds, uh, the cooler temperatures, the potential for showers, and we're breaking down the timing on that coming up here. But in the meantime, we have an overnight low of 47 degrees tonight. It's going to be a mostly clear night, so a great opportunity to check out that comet that we talked about earlier. And we also have light winds. For tomorrow, we have a high of 70 degrees. This is around 10 degrees warmer than our normal for this time of year. It's going to be a mostly sunny night or sunny day, and we have winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. 
For our highs tomorrow around the inland northwest, we're looking at 72 degrees in Coeur d'Alene, 74 in Kellogg, 73 in Pullman, 72 in Ritzville, and 71 degrees in Moses Lake. Now, along with those cooler temperatures that are on our way, on its way, as we spoke about, we also have the chance for rain. So Wednesday's really going to be our best day to get this. We're looking at, at about an 80% chance of measurable rain. Right now, we're tracking around a tenth of an inch of wetting rain here. Thursday, our chances subside just a bit to 60%, mostly dry for Friday, and then we also have the potential for rain for Saturday. So if, as you're planning out your fall activities, maybe you want to get over to Green Bluff and pick out those pumpkins this weekend. You'll want to plan that around the rain, and the best way to do that is to download our First Alert Weather app. Here's a look at how this is going to play out for the next couple of days. Starting with Tuesday, we'll be mostly dry, as we said, sunshine, temperatures around 70 degrees. But by the afternoon, around 4 p.m., you can see central Washington. A lot of our friends over there, they're seeing the first bit of this rain moving in. Here we're fast forwarding to about 10 p.m. Now this system is making its way into Colville, Deer Park, Ritzville, Grand Coulee, into Moses Lake and the Tri-Cities. But this will continue overnight. But 8 a.m., as you're making your way out the door for work or school, will be mostly dry. We'll just have some clouds covering our sky here. But then by the afternoon, we have scattered activity all throughout the inland northwest. So that's how that will play out for just the next couple of days. We're taking a look at our planning forecast. 70 degrees for tomorrow. Moral of the story here is we have a big shift, a big weather pattern change coming up here very soon. So tomorrow is a great opportunity to soak up that last bit of sunshine before things cool down and then stay cool for the next couple of weeks. 60 degrees on Wednesday. We have the potential for more more rain and then Thursday we're going from warmer than normal to way cooler than normal with a high of 54 and we'll have temperatures in the 50s for the next couple of days to come. All right, Allison, thank you so much. With this lovely fall weather we've been enjoying, you might want to enjoy a hike. In New Hampshire, too many people had this same idea, which ended up mobbing a mountain view with tourists climbing to see the fall foliage. ABC's Trevor Alt has the story. This morning, fall foliage has blanketed northern New Hampshire, and major crowds of tourists have too. Once we got to the top where it was like kind of bottlenecking, and people were just shoving their way through. Um, it was completely unsafe. Tamara Bro says the Artist Bluff Trail is typically an easy hike, but this season, it's been swarmed by so many people, it became dangerous. I couldn't help but think, but like, somebody's going to have to get rescued. In fact, the New Hampshire Fish and Game Department reported several rescues over the weekend, including seven Saturday night alone. As according to officials, hikers were caught in a drainage area near a brook without lights. I had lost trail and were basically stuck in a, um, a drainage in a brook um, with no lights, no water, and extremely cold. And thousands heading up to the mountains expecting fall foliage are not realizing up there it feels like winter with wind chills in the single digits. People just aren't bringing headlights, they're not bringing water, and they're just not prepared for the cold weather and what they're encountering out in the mountains right now. We saw people wearing slippers, sandals, people wearing short shorts. State officials say they can't man every trail, and many towns there do rely on tourism, but locals want more to be done to manage the crowds. It's just sad. And, like, there was trash along the side of the road, um, along the path and everything. It was, it was terrible. Mm, not something you want to see. Well, several retail companies are rolling out some new AI shopping experiences just ahead of Black Friday. Amazon's new AI chatbot Rufus will try to predict what shoppers want to buy. And just a few days ago, Walmart launched a personalized AI assistant that knows who you are when you're on their website and can even create personalized shopping experiences. Experts say in this era of AI, only a few companies with a huge amount of data will have a major advantage. If you're using the U.S. Postal Service to ship holiday gifts this year, here are some important dates you might want to keep on your radar. For delivery by Christmas Day in the United States, not including Hawaii and Alaska, USPS recommends that packages are sent no later than December 21st. That's for Priority Mail Express service, which is faster and usually costs more. Less expensive options like first class mail and ground service need to go out a little earlier. First class mail must go out by December 18th and the cutoff for ground service is December 16th.
Still ahead after the break, an arrest has been made in relation to a terrifying and deadly home invasion in Michigan. Why officials believe this was a targeted attack. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Across our state, we have roads and bridges in desperate need of repair. But Initiative 2117 would make things even worse. Slashing funding for infrastructure, putting all of us at risk. 2117 is a bad deal for Washington. What's all this? You said it was a recovery day. I got my yoga mat, foam roller, electrolytes, and protein bars. The whole setup. <laughs> Refrigerant recovery, Ben. We're recovering the refrigerant to fix the heat pump. Oh, right. I knew that. Want a protein bar? Get a free heat pump with every furnace purchase at Bill's Heating and AC while supplies last. Call now. Electrolyte? Ben, take the robe off. You're busy, so at Car Wash Plaza, we're open 24-7 to match your schedule. Plus, we have safety surveillance lights and security cameras throughout the facility. It's easy with multiple payment options, cash, debit, or credit. There's even more reasons to visit our Car Wash Plaza. Our discount cars ensure major savings, and they're good at all our locations. Car Wash Plaza, it's the best in the Northwest. I'm Chad Young from TheEasyHomeBuyer.com. Spokane and Coeur d'Alene's easiest way to sell your house fast. If you have a few moments, I hope you'll give me the opportunity to make you an instant cash offer on your home. With TheEasyHomeBuyer.com, we will buy your house in as-is condition with no repairs, no closing costs, and no commissions. To get your no-obligation cash offer, give us a call or visit us online at TheEasyHomeBuyer.com. Pick up the phone to inquire. Call the easy Shine 104.9 is important because you never know where people are really at. In our deepest, darkest moments that we are looking for a light, Shine is one of those ways for me. I'm just trying to reach other addicts the same way, and one of the first things I tell them is you need to start listening to Christian music. You made my recovery possible, and I'm sure you're helping many, many people. I'm just grateful for Shine. It's such a blessing. There's a way to find hope, and it's just flipping your radio dial. For us, protecting the land means everything. It's our homestead and legacy. But Initiative 2117 puts our air and water at risk. And cuts to transportation funding will make it harder to move products. 2117 is a bad deal for Washington. 4 News Now is brought to you by Mystiqua Casino Hotel in Chewila. Thanks for staying with us. A suspect has been arrested and charged with murder in connection to a Michigan home invasion. Authorities say two men posed as utility workers at a home in Michigan and then killed the 72-year-old homeowner in what they believe was a targeted incident. ABC's Zareen Shah has the story on this terrifying and deadly home invasion. For DTE. Today, the second suspect in this brazen, deadly home invasion is under arrest after authorities say two men posing as phony utility workers We're for gas a local energy company looking for gas leaks arrived at this home in Rochester Hills, an upscale neighborhood near Detroit on Thursday night. This ring doorbell shows one mass suspect in a vest holding a fake ID badge, then showing what is fake company letterhead. We're checking for gas leaks. The homeowners didn't allow them in that night, but officials say they returned the following morning and were let in. The homeowner, 72-year-old Hussein Murray, a pawn shop owner, leads them to the basement where officials believe he was murdered. Absolutely premeditated. You know, they came to the house with a, a fake DTE placard on the side of a pickup truck. They came up to the house with a work vest on and with a fake identification card, and they came with that clipboard as well. Police say they duct taped Murray's wife and then searched the home. They may have thought there was valuables in the home due to the business and were trying to get whatever those valuables were. The energy company says if anyone arrives at your home or business and claims to be an employee, ask to see a badge with a photo ID. Also verify the information with the company. If they refuse, do not allow them in. And if they become agitated or act strange, call 911. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. 
At Numerica, we've got money answers for people with Batrachophobia. Honestly, same. Get money answers for you and only you. Learn more at NumericaCU.com. When you have moderate to severe eczema, it's okay to show off. With Dupixin, show off your clearer skin and less itch. Because you have plenty of reasons to show off your skin. With Dupixin, the number one prescribed biologic by dermatologists and allergists, you can stay ahead of your eczema. It helps block a key source of inflammation inside the body that can cause eczema to help heal your skin from within. Many adults saw 90% clearer skin. Some even achieved long-lasting clearer skin and fast itch relief after first dose. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. Show off to the world. Ask your eczema specialist about Dupixit. From the ages of 13 to 15, I experienced childhood sexual abuse and the abuse ended when I became pregnant. I made the choice to end my pregnancy. In Congress, Dave Reichert voted to ban abortion nationwide. He voted against exceptions. Reichert said as governor, he would work to unravel protection for abortion access here. And I think that is cruel. If Reichert becomes governor, I believe women are in danger. He's wrong for Washington. What do I love about Move Fitness? I love that there's a variety of fun group classes all day long. Definitely the equipment. They have so many different machines and you get it all for about a buck a day. There really is no other gym that compares. For News Now anchors, not just in the newsroom, but in the community, doing the work, listening to you, asking questions to help keep your family safe. We're the people you trust on your screens and in your neighborhood. And we'll always be there on For News Now. We are continuing to see warmer than normal temperatures for tomorrow. We have a daytime high of 70 degrees in Spokane. We will see, be seeing some sunshine, but we'll also have increasing clouds because Wednesday, that's when our cold front moves in. We'll be dropping down 10 degrees to a high of 60. We also have the potential for rain on Wednesday and wetting rain at that. Thursday, we also have rain chances cooling down to 54. And then through the weekend, we have temperatures in the 50s. Friday morning is going to be especially cold. We have a overnight low of 32 degrees. Everywhere around the inland northwest will be at or even below freezing. And then we'll have more fall-like conditions to follow. Mm. Fall is going to start falling. <laughs> All right, here's a story that should warm the hearts of some of the Midwesterners in our newsroom or around the inland northwest. Tomorrow is National Cheese Curd Day, the salty, deep-fried snack started, of course, in Wisconsin, the dairy state. The nuggets of white or yellow cheddar cheese are battered and deep-fried. They are a popular fair food, but are making their way into some restaurants as a french fry alternative. Mm. They're also a big part of poutine, which also mm -hmm. includes french fries and brown gravy. Had some poutine in Nelson, B.C. Yeah. back in August. It was delicious. Yum.